Is depersonalization anxiety related? Now, if you're struggling with depersonalization or derealization, you may have already gone to your doctors and you're explaining how you're feeling out of your body, how you're feeling disconnected, how you feel like nothing is real, you may be feeling numb, and your doctors just take a look at you and maybe even run some tests and say, oh, you're fine, it's just anxiety. And you may be thinking, I'm experiencing this even when I'm not anxious. In fact, I'm very calm right now. And your symptoms can be 24-7. Well, in this video, I want to share with you how anxiety plays a factor into depersonalization, derealization. This was one of the things that totally confused me on my recovery journey. And in fact, I see a lot of people slip up because they don't understand what's happening and what's fueling these symptoms to be there. So if you could understand what's happening, the mechanics of it, and more importantly, what to do to make this go away, well, then this won't be an issue for you long term. So with that said, let's get it started. So when I was struggling with depersonalization, derealization, I'll say DPDR for short. Well, that's what convinced me that I was going crazy. See, I was getting physical symptoms, I was getting panic attacks, I was getting intrusive thoughts, but I had never experienced DPDR. And that's what convinced me I was going crazy. It didn't matter how many people told me I had anxiety. I said, no, this is something that's way beyond anxiety. And so you have to understand first and foremost, what is DPDR? Well, depersonalization is this out of body sensation where you feel like you're disconnected while derealization feels like nothing is real where you're not sure what's real and what's not. And naturally, when you're experiencing derealization, even depersonalization, you may start questioning existence by itself. You may be getting existential anxiety. You may also be feeling feelings of numbness or brain fog and even vision changes. And so it's very important to understand that depersonalization, derealization are stress responses. Essentially, these are responses that are designed to protect you from a trauma. Okay, think of it as like a mental airbag. So what happens is that when you're in a traumatic situation, what DPDR does is that it disconnects you from the trauma. And there's a lot of cases for that. In fact, in nature, you can see if a deer gets attacked by a tiger or a lion and gets caught, you see them becoming dissociated. And in situations where race car drivers are in car accidents and they can't escape, they also describe feelings of derealization, depersonalization. So the point of telling you all this is that it has a function. Many people think depersonalization, derealization is just because they messed up their brain chemicals and they're gonna be like this forever. That's not the case. There is a clearly defined reason why you experience DPDR and even though it feels terrifying, it's totally safe. Now you may be wondering, okay, Sean, that's fine, that makes sense, but why am I experiencing these sensations when there is no trauma, when there is no stress? I'm not doing anything, and I'm experiencing depersonalization, derealization all the time. Well, here comes anxiety. A lot of people think anxiety is just something that is an emotion, just like feelings of sadness, feeling of happiness, feelings of anxiety. They think of it as an emotion, but anxiety is more than that. See, anxiety fundamentally is about survival. So it's the stress response. It's designed to protect us from threats. And so this is the part a lot of people get tripped up on because they feel like anxiety is an emotion and they may not be feeling that emotion while they're experiencing depersonalization, derealization. And I totally understand that when I'm guiding people through the mentorship where we're helping them overcome these symptoms, when I struggled with this myself, I had a really hard time understanding how anxiety plays a factor in this. So instead of using the word anxiety, think of it as the stress response. Or another way to look at it is that your nervous system has become very sensitive. Think of a smoke detector. Okay, now imagine you have a smoke detector that becomes very sensitive. Now you want to ask yourself if that, if your house caught on fire, would you want a smoke detector that's too sensitive or not sensitive enough, you would always want your smoke detector to be extra sensitive because it's better for it to go off and there not be a fire than the opposite. 
Meaning you don't want there to be a fire, but then the smoke detector just didn't catch it because it's not sensitive enough to the smoke. And that's the same thing that's happening when people are experiencing depersonalization, derealization. What happens is that people experience a stressful situation and what that does is that that sensitizes their nervous system. In other words, it sensitizes the smoke detector. And so what it does is that it keeps going off even though there's no threat. So what you're experiencing are stress responses in situations where there is no stress or there is no threat. Now again, your nervous system doesn't know what's a threat and what's not. And because it doesn't know, it always assume worst case scenario. And this is why you're experiencing depersonalization, derealization all the time. Your nervous system isn't sure what's a threat and what's not, so it's deciding to stay alive just in case because it doesn't want to be wrong. Now, your natural question will be, okay, but what caused this to happen in the first place? Well, what happened to me and what happens with people in the mentorship is most often than not, it comes from a panic attack. See, a lot of people think that it has to be a very traumatic situation, but the truth is, is that trauma itself is a very subjective experience. And what happens is that a lot of people that fall into the cycle get a panic attack, but they didn't know it was a panic attack. And what happens that I find and what I experienced as well is that I didn't know what I was experiencing was a panic attack. I thought I was going to die. And so that in itself became a very scary situation. And so what happened was, is that after that panic attack, my nervous system became very sensitive. It said, hey, we just saw a threat. So we want to make sure that we keep Sean alive. So that's typically what makes you fall into the cycle. But what's keeping you in the cycle? Why is your nervous system still feeling like everything's a threat? And what can you do to desensitize your nervous system so that the depersonalization, derealization goes away? What keeps the depersonalization, derealization alive is in fact the depersonalization, derealization. See, you being constantly focused on these sensations, you trying to fix these sensations, you maybe even fearing these sensations is in itself the threat. This is what's keeping it alive. So what's happened is, is that you've fallen into this loop. You're experiencing depersonalization, derealization as a safety mechanism from a stressor, but it has also become the stressor in itself. So what happens is that people are always focusing, am I feeling derealized? Am I feeling depersonalized? It happens when I go outside. It happens when there's bright lights. It happens all the time. No matter what I do, I feel like I messed up my brain chemicals. These are all reasons for your nervous system to stay sensitized. And this is why it's anxiety induced. It's not anxiety induced in the sense that you're always nervous all the time, but the fact that you're always focusing on it, the fact that you're frustrated by it, the fact that you're trying to fix it, the fact that you're trying to fear it, and I know these things sound small, but again, remember your nervous system doesn't know what's a threat and what's not. So it's assuming everything is a threat and it's looking at you to determine is this a threat and is it not? So if you're responding in avoidance of it, well, you're telling your nervous system that there is a threat. So how do you overcome this? What do you do to make this go away? Well, the first thing to really recognize is that what you're experiencing is not dangerous. And you may be having intrusive thoughts of what if this is going to be you forever? But the truth is that that's not the case. You just feel like that right now. And once you start focusing on the right steps, these sensations end up going away. So the first thing is really understanding that depersonalization, derealization are safe and they're harmless. And besides the fact that they may be a bit uncomfortable, that there's nothing wrong with you. Then the second thing is not trying to fix it or fight it. And a lot of people saying allowing the sensations to be there while continuing on with your day. Now that's easier said than done and I know it's very difficult. And what I have found the best way to help people overcome this is by guiding them step by step. Recovery is a long-term game. It's focused on long-term freedom. And when people are doing this on their own, I find a lot of people mess up, they slip up just because they've never gone on this journey before. So what I would say is find somebody who has gone through this, who helps people overcome this to guide you step by step. But the key really is this, to understand that the depersonalization, derealization is going to be there for just a little bit longer. And rather than trying to find ways to fix the symptoms, to focus on the anxiety, meaning what's keeping the derealization, depersonalization alive. And if you can let it be there, the sensations will be there a little bit longer, but over time it will go away. 
Now, the last thing I wanna mention is, you may be wondering, Sean, okay, but how long is it gonna take? Well, that's the wrong question. The answer is as long as it needs. See, your nervous system is gonna take as much time as it needs to recover. It's not gonna be going based on your timeline. The same way that you break your leg, your leg is gonna take as long as it needs to heal. It's not gonna to try to speed up the process because you want it to. And in the same way, your nervous system is gonna take as much time as it needs as well. So the biggest thing is not trying to speed up the process or focusing on how long it takes, but recognize letting it be there for now and continue living your life. What happens in the mentorship is people are responding and they're living their life. And what happens is that it fades away over time and it doesn't just disappear overnight. What happens is that you get a little bit of a gap, then it comes back, then the gaps get longer, then it comes back, then the gaps get even longer and then it comes back. And then eventually the gaps get so long where it just goes away once and for all. But if you're always trying to focus on, is it there? Is it not? How long is it going to take? What that does is that that adds more pressure to your nervous system. So I hope this video helped. Again, I find the best way to overcome this is by being around people that have overcome it and also being guided by somebody to overcome this because it can feel very lonely. It can feel like you're the only person going through this and it can really feel like a very exhausting experience. So what I recommend is finding someone to guide you step by step. And if you want that to be me guiding you through the whole journey, that's totally cool too. You can apply for mentorship down below. We work with a small group of people and we really focus on full recovery. This isn't sessions based. My biggest focus is on helping people overcome this without needing anyone or anything, including me. I haven't seen anything like this. I always find people getting sessions or one-off consultations, but we focus on long-term. We focus on helping you overcome it. We're very results-oriented. And it's one of the reasons why our success stories are absolutely nuts and almost unbelievable to a certain standpoint. So I hope this video helped. I hope it guided you to the right direction. I hope it brought in some clarity and I hope it got some clicks for you mentally where you finally understood what's happening. And so I hope this video helps. I'll see you in the next one.